Well, it's Dr. McDonald because I went to university for a long, long time and studied just one thing. And then you get what's called a doctorate, and you can be called doctor. But I don't give you a shot. I give you a story because I have a PhD in folk tales. So I'm all about telling stories. And these are all books that I wrote. I've written over 60, written over 66 books. I couldn't bring them all in the airplane from Seattle. I live in Seattle in the U.S., but these are some that I wrote. So I'm going to tell you some of the stories. These are all folk tales. I have a PhD in folklore, so I study folk tales. So these are folk tales from all around the world. And I'm going to start with a story from a country called Hungary. It's a country in Europe, and it's called Hungary. Not hungry, but hungry. Put your hand down for now, okay? Somewhere, someplace, across the seven seas, lived a little old lady and her little pet rooster. They were very poor, but they were very happy. One day the rooster went out to peck out something to eat. He pecked and he pecked and he pecked and he pecked and he pecked up a diamond button. Little rooster said, cock-a-doodle-doo, cock-a-doodle-doo, cock-a-doodle-doo. I like diamond buttons. I'll take it home to my good mistress because she likes diamond buttons too. He picked it up in his beak and he started to walk home. But just then, along came the king. And the king had a pair of big baggy trousers. His pants were so baggy, he had to have three servants walk behind him and hold up his pants so he could walk. He came walking down the road and his servants came behind holding up his pants. He saw the little rooster with the diamond button in his beak and he wanted that diamond for himself. He said, catch that little rooster, take his diamond button away from him and put it in my treasure chamber in the palace. And the three servants caught the little rooster, took his diamond button away and they put it in the king's treasure chamber in the palace. The little rooster was mad. <clears throat> he flew right to the king's palace. He perched on the windowsill and he called out, Cock-a-doodle-doo. Can you help me? Cock-a-doodle-doo. 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 Give me back my diamond button. Can you pound your fist and say that and look really mean? Give me back my diamond button. The king was mad. He said, catch that little rooster and throw him into the well full of water. I'll get rid of him. They caught the little rooster and threw him kersplash into a well full of water. But that rooster had a magic stomach. He called, come my empty stomach, come my empty stomach, drink up all the water in the well. His magic stomach began to drink. Can you drink? Keep drinking. Get fatter. Get fatter. Get fatter. Get fatter. He drank up all the water in the well. He flew back to the king's palace. He perched on the windowsill and he called out. Are you ready? Cock a doodle do. Cock a doodle do. Cock a doodle do. Give me back my diamond button. Oh, the king was angry. He said, Catch that rooster. And throw him in the fire. I'll get rid of him that way. They threw him in the fire. But the little rooster called, oh, Come my full stomach. Come my full stomach. Spit out all the water from the well and put out the fire. Yes. Are you ready to spit? He flew right back to the king's palace. He perched on the windowsill and he called out. Are you ready? Cock a doodle do. Cock a doodle do. Cock a doodle do. Give me back my diamond button. Oof. The king was angry. Catch that rooster. Throw him in the beehive. Let the bees sting him. They caught the little rooster and threw him in the beehive where the bees live. But the little rooster just called, Come, my empty stomach. Come, my empty stomach. Eat up all the bees in the beehive. 
they went in his magic, they couldn't sting his magic stomach, but it was full of bees. It was buzzing around. He flew right back to the king's palace. He perched on the windowsill and he called out, cock a doodle doo, cock a doodle doo, cock a doodle doo. Give me back my diamond button. Oh, the king was infuriated. Catch that rooster and bring him to me. What'll I do with him? And the first servant said, if I were you, I would hang him from a tree. Third servant said, if I were you, I would chop his head off. The next servant said, oh no, I have an idea. Why don't you sit on him and squash him flat? That was a good idea. He was a heavy king. He said, catch that little rooster, drop him in the big bag on my baggy pants behind. I'm going to sit on him and squash him flat. They caught the little rooster and dropped him in the big bag on the king's baggy pants, and he started to sit on him. But the little rooster called out, oh, come my full stomach, come my full stomach, spit out all the bees and sting that king. Ay, 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 woo, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. He was jumping around the throne room. He said, catch that little rooster and take him to my treasure chamber and let him have his old diamond button. I don't want to see him again. They left the little rooster all alone in the Turkish, in the king's treasure chamber. They said, take your diamond button and go on home. He looked around and he saw all the gold and silver, all the emeralds and rubies, all the diamonds in the king's treasure chamber. He said, this is the treasure the king has been stealing from the people all these years. Well then, come my empty stomach, come my empty stomach, eat up all the treasure in the king's treasure chamber. His stomach ate up all the diamonds, all the gold and silver, all the emeralds and rubies. And when he was very fat, he waddled home and gave it all to his good mistress. And they and the villagers lived happily and richly ever after. That's a story from Hungary. Now here's the picture book. We made it into a picture book. All of my stories are folk tales. That means they were told by the folk, by the people. So grandmas and grandpas somewhere in the world were telling these stories. And somebody wrote them down. And I either heard it or read it and made my own version and put it into a picture book. So since I wrote it down, I'm called the author, and Mr. Will Terry made the pictures, so he is called the illustrator. I like, look at the pretty picture he made for the end papers of the book. Aren't those pretty? He had a good idea for that. Let's see what the little rooster looks like. Oh, there's the old lady and her little rooster. Cock a doodle doo, cock a doodle doo, cock a doodle doo. <gasps> there comes the king and his servants taking the diamond button. Cock a doodle doo, cock a doodle doo, cock a doodle doo, you give me back my diamond button. The king was mad. Where did he throw him first? Come, my empty stomach, come, my empty stomach, drink up all the water in the well. cock a doodle doo cock a doodle doo give me back my diamond button. Where did the king put him next? Come, my full stomach, come, my full stomach, spit out all the water from the well. Psh. Cock a little do, cock a little do, give me back my diamond button. Where'd the king put him next? The beehive where the bees live. Cock a little do, cock a little do. Oh my goodness. Come my empty stomach, come my empty stomach, eat up all the Cock a doodle doo, cock a doodle doo, give me back my diamond button. First the king was mad, then he was angry, then he was furious, then he was infuriated. What does that mean, infuriated? What does that mean? What does that mean? 
So mad. I was trying to think of words that made mad and madder and madder. So I said mad, angry, furious, infuriated. Because when I'm writing the story, I can make up and put in any words I want to put in. The king said, what shall I do with him? Oh, chop off his head, hang him from a tree, sit on him and squash him. Drop the little rooster in the big bag on my baggy pants behind. I'm going to sit on him and squash him flat. Come, my empty stomach. Come, my empty stomach. Spit out all the... Catch that little rooster and take him to my treasure chamber and let him have his old diamond button. I don't want to see him again. Take your diamond button and go on home. Oh, this is the treasure the king has been stealing from the people all these years. Well then, come my empty stomach, come my empty stomach, eat up all the treasure in the king's treasure chamber. His stomach ate up all the gold and silver, all the diamonds, all the emeralds and rubies. Do you see the diamond button? You know what happened? Mr. Will Terry, the illustrator, painted this picture and shipped it, mailed it all the way to Chicago to the publisher, and he forgot to paint the diamond button in there. And the editor said, the boys and girls are going to look for the diamond button. You've got to put the diamond button. And they mailed the picture back to him, and he had to paint it in because he forgot to put it there. You looked for it, didn't you? It's a good thing they noticed to put it in. He went along home and gave it all to his good mistress. And they and the villagers lived happily and richly ever after. I know, I like the picture he drew. He, he gave them all kinds of animals that were had to jump out of the way when all the gold and jewels came in the house. So the illustrator can put in fun things that I didn't think of that they can put into the story. <clears throat> this is a story from Japan. It's called The Boy from the Dragon Palace. And there's my picture because I'm the author. And there's Sachiko Yoshikawa because she made the pictures, and she's from Japan, so she knew just how to make the pictures. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a folk tale from Japan, so I didn't make it up. There were like 19 different versions from 19 different grandparents that had been telling the story, and I read them and made my own version. So I'm the author because I wrote this version, but it's a folk tale. I didn't make it up. The dragon... The Boy from the Dragon Palace, a filter from Japan, retold by Margaret Reed MacDonald. Who is that? Yeah. Illustrated by Sachiko Yoshikawa. A poor flower seller found no one to buy his flowers. He said, well, I will just give my flowers to the Dragon King who lives beneath the sea. It's good to be kind to the Dragon King. And he threw his flowers onto the waves and the water began to swirl. And suddenly, up from the sea came a beautiful lady. And she had a little boy in her arms. The little boy had the snottiest nose you ever did see. Snot and runny nose, right? She said, this little boy is a gift for you from the Dragon King. And she put the snot-nosed child in the old man's arms. What will I do with this snot-nosed boy? Oh, take him home, said the lady. He will bring you good luck. But you must feed him shrimp every day. Put in vinegar and put in sugar. He likes it like that. And she disappeared beneath the waves. The old man went home. He stopped at the market and he spent his last coin to buy shrimp and sugar and vinegar, yes, for the little boy. You remembered it right away, didn't you? He made the food and gave it to the little boy to eat. He said, I spent my last coin on this food for you. If you're going to bring me luck, you better start now. The little boy picked up the bowl and he slurped. So, K 
Can you put in shrimp? Put in vinegar. Put in sugar. Stir it up. He likes it like that. Can you slurp it? You ready? <sighs> then the boy snuffled on his right sleeve. So wipe your nose on your right sleeve. You that? He snuffled on his left sleeve. And hook, hook, hook. Ah, choo! And when the little boy sneezed, <gasps> The floor was covered with gold coins. Wow, he's a magic child. Okay, okay, okay. The next day the man went to town. He took a gold coin. He bought more shrimp and more vinegar and more sugar and good food for himself. And when he came back, he cooked it up for the little boy. Put in shrimp, put in vinegar, put in sugar. He likes it like that. Wow. I can see that you can do magic, little boy. Could you make this house bigger? It's full of gold coins. I can't even move now. Can you give me a bigger house? Ah, huh? Snuffle. Snuffle. You ready? Huh, huh, huh. And the little wooden hut became a magnificent Japanese palace. The next day, the old man went to town again. He bought more shrimp and vinegar and sugar. And when he came back, he cooked it up for the little boy. Put in vinegar, put in shrimp, put in sugar. He likes it like that. Wow, this house is gigantic. I need servants to take care of it and cooks to prepare the food. Could you do that? Ah, uh huh? <sighs> snuffle, snuffle, huh, 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 ah, choo! And the door opened, and in came servants carrying delicious food prepared by the cooks. So the next day, he simply said. Servant, go to town, buy shrimp and vinegar and sugar. Cook, prepare the food for the little boy. Yeah. But when the, the cook brought the food, the little boy would not eat. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, ah, ah. He wanted the old man to go fix it, or he wouldn't even touch it. So the old man had to walk downtown in the hot sun and buy the shrimp and vinegar and sugar and walk home and cook it up and feed the child and watch him eat. And it was so disgusting to watch him eat with that runny, snotty nose. But, of course, the old man thought of something more to wish for. So let's put in shrimp, put in vinegar, put in sugar. He likes it like that. I would like to have... A chest full of treasure. Can you do that? Uh huh. Snuffle. Snuffle. Huh, huh, huh. And it was done. Now, I had written a chest full of jewels, but the illustrator, Sachiko, emailed me and said, that's boring. Could he wish for something else? I said, it's a folktale. There's a pattern. It doesn't have to be any certain way in a folktale. Everyone that tells it can change a little bit. And so I can change this little bit. I'll change one word, a chest full of treasure. And you can draw anything you want in there. So she put samurai swords and samurai helmets and Japanese fans and all kinds of beautiful treasure. And I said, what do you want to draw? He can wish for it. It's a folktale. There's just a pattern. I can put in anything you want. She said, I want to draw Japanese garden and ladies in silk kimonos. I said, he can wish for that. So the next day, the old man went to town. He bought shrimp and vinegar and sugar. You ready? Put in shrimp. Put in vinegar. Put in sugar. He likes it like that. I would like to have a beautiful Japanese garden and a pond with golden fish and beautiful ladies in silk kimonos to dance and entertain me. Can you do that? Ah, uh huh? 
Snuffle. Snuffle. Huh, 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 ah, choo! And it was done. The old man wished for everything he could think of. He wished for rooms full of jewels, rooms full of diamonds, rooms full of gold and silver. He wished for carriages and horses. Soon he had everything a person could ever want for the rest of his life. And because it's a folk tale, we can take three wishes of our own. So what do you want to wish for? I can take three wishes. You had your hand up first. What do you want to wish for? Huh? A what? Bananas? He wants, what is, what does he want? A banana, a monkey and a banana? A rainbow monkey and a banana. Okay, he gets a rainbow monkey and a banana for the monkey for you. Okay, rainbow monkey and a banana for him. Okay. What do you want to wish for? A lot of money. A lot of money for her and for you. Unlimited wishes. Unlimited wishes. He's clever. Okay, put your hands up. I can only take three. Okay, put in shrimp, put in vinegar, put in sugar. Okay, Snot Nose Little Boy, we would like to have unlimited wishes for that fellow. We want lots of money for that girl. And this young man would like a rainbow monkey and a banana. Can you do that? Uh huh. Snuffle, snuffle. Huh, huh, huh. Achoo! And it was done. Zap! You have all the wishes in the world. Use them well. Look out for him. You got wishes. And for you, money. Money. Get your hands out. Catch it. Catch it. Catch it. Okay. Go. Huh, huh. All the money in the world. Okay. And, oh my goodness. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. After a while, the old man didn't need anything else. But still, every day, he had to go down to the market, buy the shrimp and vinegar and sugar, come back and cook it up, and watch the snot-nosed child eat. And so disgusting having that snotty child in his house. He said, I don't need that snot-nosed child here anymore. And he took the boy out, and he put him on the road. And he said, go back to the Dragon King's Palace where you came from, huh? And he slammed the gate. The snot-nosed boy looked at that closed gate. Then he snuffled on his right sleeve, snuffled on his left sleeve, and hung, hung, hung. Achoo! And what do you think happened? Everything vanished. The house went away. The palace went away. The garden went away. The jewels went away. The money went away. Nothing was left but a poor flower cellar in a little wooden hut. But down at the Dragon King's palace, the snot nosed little boy was slurping shrimp. Those humans, those humans, you can't help some humans, he said. So true, so true, said the Dragon King. They usually want something more. And this one said, Snot Nose Little Boy, this one never even said thank you. He never even said thank you. And that's the story from Japan of the Snot Nose Little Boy. Oh, is it real? Folk tales aren't exactly real. They're fun stories that grandmas and grandpas tell to their grandkids. And every grandma and grandpa makes it up their own way and changes a little bit to make it lots and lots of fun. But they aren't exactly real, but they are fun. Can you all stand up for a minute in front of your chair? Stand up and do everything I do and say everything I say. Are you ready? This is a folk tale from Brazil in South America. The sun was shining. The monkey said, Let's play.
day. Now you got to swing in the trees. Are you ready? Hand over hand over hand. It's fun. Hand over hand over hand. It's fun. Hand over hand over hand. It's fun. Ray. 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 I'm cold. I'm wet. We should build a house. Let's build a house. Uh, tomorrow. 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 Next day. The sun was shining. Let's play. Hand over hand over hand. It's fun. Hand over hand over hand. It's fun. Hand over hand over hand. It's fun. Rain. 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 I'm cold. I'm wet. We should build a house. We should build a house. Ah, uh, tomorrow. 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 Next day. The sun is shining. Oh, let's play. Hand over hand over hand. It's fun. Hand over hand over hand. It's fun. Hand over hand over hand. It's fun. Rain. 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 I'm cold. I'm wet. We should build a house. Let's build a house. And tomorrow. Wait a minute. When should you build your house? Who said the day? You said the day? Don't be like the monkeys. Be like this young man. Build your house when? Today. And that's the story of monkeys in the rain from Brazil. Yeah, sit back down. Sit back down. Sit back down. Good job. You don't put things off. You do it today. You don't put things off. Oh, we have a story from Denmark. This is a country in Europe. Yeah. You can all read that, even kindergarten, right? Fat cat. The illustrator is Julie Paskus, and she lives in Seattle, so there's... Me with Julie in front of her house in Seattle. I live in Seattle in the United States, and she lives near me, so I got to go to her house. Julie said, hands down, Julie said, I want to draw a really fat cat because the book is called Fat Cat. But my paper is not very big. I could make a cat this big or this big or I know what I'll do. That's what the cat she drew. She covered the entire paper with cat. She could not have made a fatter cat on that piece of paper, could she? She's a very clever illustrator. Fat cat. A Danish folktale retold by Margaret Reed MacDonald, illustrated by Julie Paschkus. A cat and a mouse kept house. You can see it was not a good plan. The cat was always hungry, so the mouse was always cooking. One day, mouse baked 35 pies. They're all there. You can count them. But when cat began to eat, slip, slop, slurp, slip, slop, slurp. Can you try that? Slip, slop, slurp, slip, slop, slurp. The greedy cat swallowed them all. Mouse looked at cat in alarm. My cat, you sure are fat. I may be fat, but I'm still a hungry cat. 
Out the door clumped the cat, meowing greedily. Oh, a meow, meow, fat. Get, get your paws out and try that. Oh, a meow, meow, fat. I'm a hungry, hungry cat. I am meow, meow, fat. I'm a hungry, hungry cat. There was a wash lady doing her laundry. My cat, you sure are fat. Huh. I may be fat, but I'm still a hungry cat. And slip, slop, slurp, he swallowed the wash lady. Gunk. And slip, slop, slurp, he swallowed her laundry. Oh. And slip, slop, slurp, he swallowed her soap suds too. Now, can you put bubbles in your throat and try this? Here was a company of soldiers brandishing their swords. My cat, you sure are fat. I may be fat, but I'm still a hungry cat. Slip, slop, slurp, he swallowed the soldiers. Slip, slop, slurp, he swallowed their swords too. Oh, I'm meow, meow, fat, I'm a hungry, hungry cat. I'm meow, meow, fat, I'm a hungry, hungry cat. Along came the king on his elephant. My cat, you sure are fat. I may be fat, but I'm still a hungry cat. And slip, slop, slurp, he swallowed the king. And slip, slop, slurp, he swallowed the elephant too. How fat can you get? Oh, I'm yum, yum, fat. I'm a hungry, hungry cat. I am yum, yum, fat. I'm a hungry, hungry cat. Home went cat. Little mouse was doing her sewing, snipping and sewing, snipping and sewing, went in, clomped cat. My cat, you sure got fat. I may be fat, but I'm still a hungry cat. Slip, slop, slurp, he swallowed little mouse, and slip, slop, slurp, he swallowed her scissors and needle and thread. Little mouse looked around inside the cat's dark tummy. There was the wash lady in the wash tub, and the soldiers, and the swords, and the king, and the elephant. They were all lying around looking miserable. What is wrong with you people, said Little Mouse. He might be a fat cat. He might be a hungry cat. But enough is enough. She took her scissors, poked a hole right through the cat's t t tummy. Ow! Oh! Ow! Oh! When the hole was big enough, out jumped Little Mouse. Everybody out! Everybody out! Everybody out! Out came the wash lady dragging her wash tub. Out came the soldiers brandishing the swords. Out came the king pulling his elephant. And they all went about their business. But Little Mouse spent the rest of the day sewing up the greedy cat's tummy. Because after all, they were best friends. Ow, 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 hold still, cat. Oh, I meow, meow, flat. I'm an empty, empty cat. I'm meow, meow, flat. I'm an empty, empty cat. After that, cat may have been hungry, but he always left something for mouse to eat, too. And after that, if anyone spoke to cat, they were careful to speak with respect. My cat, you sure are fat, fat, fat. Not fat, fancy. My cat, you sure are fat, fat, fat. Not fat, fabulous. My cat. You sure are fat, 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 not fat, fantastic. 
And that's the meow, meow, tail of the fat, fat cat. And that's a story from Denmark. Now, you know, when you make up the story, when you retell it, you can make it in your own way. In this story, the mouse cut a hole and everybody got out. But if you're making up a story about a big animal eats little animals, you could have a different ending. You could have different animals. You could make up your own story and have different animals eating. And how else could it end? Can you think of a different ending you could use? All around the world, this folktale is told, and the ending's different sometimes. How would you change it? How, how would you make it end? I would put a fire in the cat's stomach. Oh, build a fire and they get out. And that happens sometimes in folktales. I've seen folktales where that happened. They build a fire and, and, get, and get out. How about you? Glue. Wow, I don't know. That might stuck you, trap you in there. I'm not sure how that would work, but it might. How would you do it? I will I'll get the knife and shot the cat. Okay. H how would you fix it? I would tickle the cat from the inside. Tickle the cat and it would go, ah, and you'd climb out its mouth. How would you fix it? The... The elephant has a horn, so the horn will stunk the cat. Use the elephant's tusks to punch a hole. Could do that. Sure. Yeah. How would you fix it? I can tickle their throat, and I can just climb up to its mouth and get out. Tickle its throat, and open its mouth, and climb up and get out. Wow. Okay. Let's see. I'll take one more. How about yours? How would you do? If the cat uh, was going to eat another one and everyone would get out of the cat's mouth when he's going to eat another one. Oh, watch when the cat gets ready to eat somebody else. They have to open their mouth, run out real quick. That's clever. You can go back to the classroom and think of all kinds of ways to write your own story with a different ending. Because all around the world, people tell folk tales and they change them a little bit every time. Did anybody have, put your hands down for now. You can work on that back in the classroom. Did anybody have any questions you wanted to ask me about being an author or a folklorist or a storyteller or a children's librarian? I'm a librarian too. Did you have a question you wanted to ask? Why is your name McDonald? Do you like McDonald's? Why is my name McDonald? Do I like McDonald's? I love McDonald's. I guess the question most people ask is why is my name Reed? My name is McDonald because I married Mr. McDonald and that was his name. So I became, but my name, why was my name Reed? Margaret Reed McDonald. I love to read, but that's not why. Why is my name Reed? Why is my name Reed? R E A D. Why is my name Reed? Um, because you like Reed. I like to read. That's not the reason. Why is my name Reed? Because you want to change your name to Reed. No, I didn't have to change it. Why is my name Reed? Because your mom and dad like make it to be Reed. They, my mom and dad named me Reed because my father's name was Murray Reed and my grandpa's name was Parley Garfield Reed, so I was Margaret Reed. That's my real name. Yes, yeah, so I became a, libra a children's librarian. I'd go to all the schools and say, my name is Miss Reed. I came to tell you to read books. But then I married Mr. McDonald, so I couldn't go to the school and say, my name is Mrs. McDonald. I t told you to all run out and eat hamburgers. That wouldn't be any good, would it? So I kept the read in there, too. Put your hands down. Did anyone have another question you wanted to ask? Yeah. When, when you were little, did you learn in this school? When I was little, I learned in the school, and I read lots of books when I was little, and I made up stories just like you do and wrote them down like you do. It's a lot of fun. But when you write stories down, then you also got to rewrite them and keep making them better and better. Our time is almost up. We had a story today from Hungary, a story from Japan, and we had a story from Denmark. And I think it would be really fun if you went home and told somebody a story that you heard. You could tell them a story about a little rooster because you know all the parts, or about a snot-nosed little boy, or about a fat cat. 
are a story about monkeys in the rain from Brazil. We've been all around the world with stories, and you can go home and tell someone a story tonight. Thank you very much.